Hey everyone, last time we talked about what I thought were the best movies I saw in 2019, which means now it's time for the worst. These are my bottom 10 movies of 2019. Except that's not actually true. It's really my bottom five movies of 2019. Why only five? Well, I started making my usual bottom 10 list, and I realized I was having a lot of trouble filling it out to 10 because I just didn't see that many genuinely terrible movies last year. And I'm not sure if I should be sorry about that. But in any case, to bring the list to 10, I would have had to include some movies that weren't actually bad, just the least good. And even though I'm pretty sure I may have done that before, I don't think that fits the spirit of what this list should be. This should be the genuinely terrible movies from last year, the cream of the crap. So we're just doing five plus a couple of dishonorable mentions. And just for the record, even if I did stretch it to 10, Joker still would not have been on the list. So once again, calm thine tits. Anyway, here are my bottom five movies of 2019. Number five. Oh, let's get ready for Dumbo! That is an actual line uttered by Michael freaking Buffer himself in Dumbo. I, I, d d why? This is, of course, a live-action remake of a classic Disney animated film, one of three that the House of Mouse put out last year, along with Aladdin and The Lion King. And for my money, Dumbo is easily the worst of the bunch. And considering they gave this story to Aaron Kruger and Tim freaking Burton, of all people, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that this turned out to be kind of a mess. It's about twice as long as the original, and it... Feels like it. The first half especially drags ass. Most of the human characters are pointless. The kids are terrible actors. It gets unnecessarily dark at times. And while I did kind of like Michael Keaton's shady businessman character, even he could not save this movie. And again, Michael Buffer. Just... Why? Number four. Glass. This is, of course, the conclusion of a trilogy of films that started way back in the day with Unbreakable and more recently continued with Split. Two movies I actually enjoyed. Hell, with Split, I thought, maybe this is it. Maybe Shyamalan has finally figured it out. He's recaptured the magic, and Glass is going to be awesome. This is the part of the review that is known as brutal self-reflection. I am an idiot. I admit, Shyamalan, you got me. You totally got me. You absolutely had me fooled into thinking you figured out how to be a good filmmaker again. Damn you, sir. The sad thing is, he probably could have made Glass a great film if he truly wanted to, but he seemed far too concerned with stroking his own ego and lecturing us about how comic books work, because he read one once. I don't honestly know how the entire cast felt about this movie, but based on the complete lack of shits given by Bruce Willis, he clearly knew this was not going to live up to the hype. James McAvoy, on the other hand, was doing the polar opposite of what Bruce Willis was doing, and, you know, at least he was having fun. Samuel L. Jackson was awesome, but that's just how he rolls. He couldn't deliver a bad performance if he wanted to. He's just not capable. And Anya Taylor-Joy, oh, God, she was wasted on this movie. I hated what they did with her character. The signature Shyamalan twist was stupid. The final battle was pathetic. And overall, Glass was ass. And I should have known. Number three, Serenity. Oh my god, this movie. Just, this was amazing in all the worst ways. It starts off looking like just an average, mediocre thriller. Matthew McConaughey is playing a fishing boat captain named Baker Dill. Yes, that's actually his name. And one day, his ex-wife, played by Anne Hathaway, shows up and asks him to kill her current husband, played by Jason Clark. You know, classic love story. And throughout the first half, McConaughey and Hathaway seem to be in a contest to see who can chew the most scenery. Hathaway is going full-on Jessica Rabbit, and McConaughey... He was clearly on something. Probably several things. And then there's Clark, who is a total cartoon villain. He would be twirling his mustache if he had one. 
And while all this nonsense is going on, it's clear something is up. You can't quite put your finger on what, but there's something. And there's little things here and there that kind of tip you off, like the fact that everyone on this fictional island has an American accent, and yet they all drive British cars. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark, and you will have several guesses as to what that something is. All of them will be wrong. All of them. All of them. You will never figure out the twist, because the actual twist in this movie is so batshit insane, even M. Night Shyamalan would take a look at this and think, no, that's too far. For the life of me, I cannot figure out why anyone would have signed off on this. Just what were they thinking? And, you know, it's actually one of those movies that almost has to be seen to be believed, so I hesitantly give it a recommendation. It is on Amazon Prime if you got it, and that is the only reason I am not spoiling the twist. Although, granted, even if I did tell you the twist, you still wouldn't believe me anyway because it's so stupid, but I'm still not gonna tell you. If you do plan to watch this movie, you might want to get yourself some edibles. It may help. Number two, Wonder Park. This is the story of a little girl who wanders into an amusement park created by her own imagination and saves it from an army of zombie chimpanzees as a coping mechanism for the fact that her mom has cancer. Bet you didn't figure out that from the trailer. Wonder Park is, of course, infamous for officially having no credited director, as the original director was accused of inappropriate and unwanted conduct and given the boot. And you know, if you had told me that this movie legitimately had no director, I would have believed you. This is an unholy mess. For starters, the park in the movie is actually called Wonder Land, not Wonder Park. Why they didn't use that for the name of the movie, I don't know. And if there was some legal reason, you would think they would have researched that before they named the damn park. And one of the first things we see in this movie is a bunch of neighborhood kids building this huge ass roller coaster that spans several backyards. And somehow none of the parents notice this until they're already riding the damn roller coaster. Somebody needs to call Child Protective Services on that entire goddamn neighborhood. And the kids who rode that coaster should have died at least three times by my count, but this movie gives not one damn for the laws of physics. And the film just continues to spiral out of control from there. Totally inconsistent feels like a woefully inadequate description for this film. It's more like the very concept of tone just fucked off and left. And boy howdy, the jokes did not land. All of the animal mascots in this imaginary park are not funny. I love John Oliver, but my god, I hated his character. And that whole mom has cancer thing, they never actually say the C word out loud in the movie, but it's pretty clear that's something on that level. It's not that you can't do a movie about a traumatic childhood experience. You can, but there's a right way to do it. And then there's Wonder Park. It seemed like this was trying to be something in the same vein as Inside Out or the Lego movie, but it didn't understand how and why those movies worked. Or indeed, how movies work in general. But at least the movie looked good, and Ilion Animation Studios deserves to work on something so much better. Could someone out there please throw them a friggin' bone? And before we get to number one, which I'm sure will be a huge surprise to you all, some dishonorable mentions. Dark Phoenix. The X-Men film franchise started off with a bang in the year 2000, and in the year 2019, it ended with a whimper. This was their second attempt at adapting the Dark Phoenix saga for the big screen, and maybe it's just time for them to admit that it's not gonna work. I wouldn't necessarily say it was a terrible movie, but it was painfully unremarkable. Especially compared to, well, pretty much every superhero movie of the last few years. Sophie Turner, bless her, she tried. I do like her as Jean Grey, but even she could not make this movie any less bland. The Kitchen. Despite having a talented cast and what seemed like a decent premise on paper, the kitchen just fell flat. I know it was adapted from a comic book, and it felt to me like they were trying to cram too much comic into one two-hour movie, because it just felt like a disjointed mess. Domino Gleason's character, for example, gets introduced completely out of nowhere, and the movie just acts like we're supposed to know who he is. 
And maybe with the exception of Elizabeth Moss's character, I didn't find anyone in this film to be all that interesting. Ad Astra. This might surprise a few people considering it did generally get favorable reviews and was probably on more than a few best of lists for 2019. And if you enjoyed the movie, that is fine. I thought it was dumb. If you had told me at the start of 2019 that there would be a movie that year featuring space pirates on the moon and exploding monkeys, I would not have expected Ad Astra to be that movie. It's clearly trying to be this epic space opera a la 2001 with some serious things to say about human nature and space exploration, but I just found it way too silly to take seriously. And when it wasn't being silly, it was slow. And I was bored. Well, there's no putting this off anymore, so let's get on with it. My number one worst movie of 2019 is indeed Cats. I mean, what else was I going to pick here? This movie has haunted my very soul like no other movie I have seen before, and I don't think I will ever be the same again. And judging by some of the shit I've seen on Twitter, I am not alone. I think poor Lindsay Ellis has finally cracked. And it's not just that Cats is a bad movie, it may very well be the worst movie I've seen with the most talented cast. None of these people deserve this. Sir Ian McKellen, Dame Judi Dench, Jennifer Hudson, Idris Elba, James Corden, well, maybe he deserved it. But I hope these people were paid well and did not accept lower salaries in exchange for a share of the profits because, well, what profits? As for the plot, well, what plot? There is no plot. There is exposition. In fact, that's pretty much the entirety of the movie, just cats introducing themselves while singing and dancing. And they all have silly names like the Rum Tum Tugger. He's the cat who gives hand jobs. I mean that as a joke, but considering how unusually sexually charged this movie was, that might actually be true. And boy do I have questions about the people who made this movie. My questions have questions. With the exception of Jennifer Hudson singing Memory, which was far better than it had any right to be, the music is pretty terrible. And of course, as I'm sure you have all heard by now, even if you didn't see my original vlog about this movie, the visual effects were not only not done well, but they weren't done. Period. They put this movie in theaters before the effects were finished, and then a few days after release, they put out an updated version of the movie with supposedly improved effects. I haven't gone back to see it again because no, but that is just amazing. They patched a movie. That's a thing now. I admit I'm curious about the supposedly improved effects, but I haven't gone back to see it again because I'd like to hold on to what little shred of sanity I have left. I might pick up the Blu-ray at some point, if only just for the inevitable riff tracks, but honestly, I'm not sure if I want them to do a riff tracks because none of those guys should have to suffer as I have suffered. I don't wish that on anyone. They already went through monos, they don't need cats. And with that, we are mercifully done with 2019. So here's looking forward to a great 2020. Ah, damn it.